take two. Because <laughs> the last time I forgot to press record. So anyways. Eric, you didn't hit record. This morning we're heading to, we're heading to Paso Robles. We're going to go see some uh, zoo, uh, uh, animal sanctuary. We're going to see uh, lions and giraffes, right? And an elephant, camels, hopefully zebras. zebras. Um, so maybe just one zebra. Maybe yeah, we don't know exactly how many animals, but we're gonna see some animals. Um, so this is where we're heading this morning. Owls. Here's the boring part of the car. Fun part. to you wildlife education center we're gonna see some animals right let's see some animals tonight day one we're day stranded one. here day one on parakeet island <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> welcome dancing. my name's Mackenzie. i'm one of two zookeepers here at the zoo we started out with four animals and now we have almost 300 so it's grown quite a bit so what we do is we rescue animals from different situations um, so people do get them all the time, um, and they don't realize, yeah, they don't realize that they can live to about 75 years old, so they'll sometimes, yeah, so they'll sometimes outlive their owners. Oh my god, look at this! Yeah, she's a cockatoo. Um, she was actually kept in a two by two foot box her whole life. Uh, that was for 20 years, and then when her owner passed away, she willed him onto her son. He decided he didn't want her anymore. So she's a lot happier here now. She came to us completely gray, didn't really have any feathers. Yeah, you're a pretty girl, huh? So you can see she has really pretty yellow coloring on the back of her. Well, she doesn't have many right now. She's molting right now. But Peach is the other one in there, has this bright coral color in her crest. Yeah, you can feel how soft her. <laughs> Good job! So this is a red ruffie. Oh, His name is Rufio. Have you guys seen the movie Madagascar? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what he's from. <laughs> so they only come from the island of Madagascar, and that's the, one of the reasons they're the most endangered mammal right now, uh, because there's only 5% of the rainforest hey, left there. Hey, buddy. Um, so they've lost lots of their habitat. There used to be over 200 breeds of lemur, and now there's less than 60. So they're declining pretty rapidly. But thankfully, there's been a successful re-release program for them. So they're being bred at places like Duke and then re-released out into the island. So really cool that they've actually been successful. Oh, All right, so this here is Flowers. What? Flowers. Flowers, yes. Yeah. So we got her and her brother and sister this summer. Really survive out in the wild. So they came to us as itty bitty babies, and now they're pretty grown up. They're almost a year old now. Um, <laughs> so people, the people don't realize, but they're actually pretty cuddly animals. Pretty sweet. Um, that's only if you're hand raising them, I guess. But people will try to get these guys as pets. They'll have them de skunked, and then they'll keep them in their house. But they are really destructive animals. They dig a lot, and they get into things. And they have pretty sharp teeth, so not a good animal to have around. That's <laughs> a pet. <laughs> yeah, not a good pet. Um, but these guys actually still have their glands. They're capable of spraying, but they're not going to because, uh, first of all, they've been raised by humans and they give a bunch of warnings before they spray. So if you ever encounter a skunk out in the wild, they'll first kiss at you, then they'll wave their tail at you, and then they'll actually walk on their front hands and do a handstand um, to show off this white stripe, and that's a warning sign before they spray. So they actually have a limited number of sprays in their lifetime, so they don't want to really give them away. So. That's how I know she's not there. She can actually 
see a mouse's eyelashes from two miles away. That's how good their vision is. So they'll be hunting up in the sky and then swoop down and catch something on the ground. Um, and the reason why she's dark on top and light on bottom, it's called counter shading and that's so she looks like the color of the sky kind of when she's flying and then if someone were to be flying over her, she'd look like the color of the brown. So really cool how evolution's created these birds. <laughs> shattered um, so he came to live with us so this is as big as they get they only weigh a couple ounces so I can hardly feel them on my hand um, and that doesn't hurt at all pathetically <laughs> so they eat little tiny mice and insects and stuff like that um, they make a lot of noise though for being so little and he just <laughs> I was hit by a car mm -hmm. you can see um, he was hit and then his eye got infected so they had to have it removed definitely would not survive out the wild like that. Um, Sophia here, she is, she is a Eurasian eagle owl. So we have this breed of owl. Um, and she is fully capable of flying. Um, you might want to give her a little bit of space. She likes to do a bit of baiting where she jump off the glove. Ooh, you can see that wingspan. The females can have up to a six foot wingspan. Um, and they're called eagle owls because they have these huge talons, kind of like an eagle. And you can see she actually has feathers on her talons, which is pretty rare for a bird, and that's because she's hunting in places where there's a lot of snow. Uh, anyone know how they hunt? What sense they use to hunt? Like their eyes? No, I not saw? their eyes. So most people think it is their eyes because they're so large, but okay, owls so. actually use echolocation, right. So they'll send a sound down to a mouse or something, and it'll bounce back off them, and they can pinpoint where that animal is using that. Um, and they've actually done studies with these birds. Uh, they've watched them hunt in snow and they've found that 100% of the time they can get a mouse under two feet of snow. So they never make mistakes. Um, oh. and she actually has an ear somewhere up here. So it's kind of like high up on her head and then one lower on her neck. And most people think that these are her ears, but they're actually just devices for catching more sound as well as the cones around her face. That's all funneling sound into her ears. The other, so he's kind of showing him his boss. Oh. So this one in here is our female peregrine falcon. Um, oh, she has no. an injured wing, as you can see when she's flopping it. It doesn't really get her anywhere. Um, so like I said, a lot of these birds can't fly, and that's why they're here. Uh, so peregrine falcons are actually the fastest animal in the world. They can fly almost 300 miles an hour, and they do crazy spirals in the air, and spins, and flips. Um, really beautiful flyers and they were almost in, extinct for a while because of the take, people taking over their habitat but they've actually learned to live in places like New York City. They nest up in the skyscrapers and in the apartment buildings so they've uh, actually made a good comeback and they'll eat all the pigeons that are flying around there so it works out for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> flying around here and didn't really realize it. Um, so this is uh, one of the main predator hawks in this area. Um, so she came to us because she has a, she's blind in one eye, she had an injury, and now she can't see out of one of her eyes. So she wouldn't do very good hunting, and that's because they use their vision to hunt. Um, so unlike the owls, uh, she uses her eyes. You can see she has really kind of crazy eyebrows, and that's shielding the sun out of her eyes. She can actually see a mouse's eyelashes from two miles away. That's how good their vision is. So they'll be hunting up in the sky and then swoop down and catch something on the ground. Um, and the reason why she's dark on top and light on bottom, it's called counter shading. And that's so she looks like the color of the sky kind of when she's flying. And then if someone were to be flying over her, she'd look like the color of the brown. So really cool how evolution has created these birds.
All right, we are here at the Paso Robles Animal Shelter slash zoo slash conservatory, and we got to see a bunch of cool animals, including tigers and mountain lions, bears, uh, camels, turtles, birds, and African porcupine. Yeah. Guacamayas. Yeah. And this guy, he's pretty cool. He smells kind of funky, but... Right? Right, boy? Hi. Yeah, hi. Hey, what's up? What's up? Man or woman? I mean, I don't know what you are, but what's... All right, so this has been a pretty successful trip. It's pretty nice to see some of the uh, animals here. Um, you know, nice to see animals every once in a while. We gotta enjoy them while we still have them. Folks, if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and join the conversation down below by leaving a comment. Uh, if you don't, then also leave me a comment so I can make these videos better. Thank you.